And the chief guest is a substitute for rule to kindly address our distinguished audience. Friend Sam Petrova's example and just say distinguished people on the dais and indeed in the audience because we have such an impressive gathering here of people of distinction from around the world. So uh, friends, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, pleasure to be here this evening. I think that uh, these three days of the Vivasi Bharata Divas has given everybody an extraordinary sense of how far we have all come. I used to be a Pravasi, I no longer am. But uh, having been through that experience and having indeed addressed Pravasi Bharata Divases in the past from the other side of the fence, it gives me great satisfaction to see how far we've come and where we are today. I thought uh, Mr. Rami Ranger's acronym was really creative because uh, about 12, now 13 years ago, I wrote a book called India from Midnight to the Millennium in which I asked whether NRI should stand for not really Indian or never relinquished India. Because in fact there's a little bit of both of that in every NRI. We have left something of India behind and yet we have never given up what India has represented for us in our families, in our heritage and in our souls. But today I rather like the National Reserve of India, so thank you Mr. Ramirez. I think it's a very good uh, a very good alternative because you are indeed, and I can now say you, I can't say we anymore, but you are indeed the National Reserve of India. You have been able to bring forth your contributions both in terms of financial assistance, whether it's the hardworking laborers in the Gulf who have sent back $22 billion a year to our national exchequer, or whether it's the well-heeled investors from Silicon Valley or from the UK and the US who've come in and started projects, ventures, factories in our country, or whether it is perhaps more important and less tangible than the actual dollar contributions, maybe it is the spirit of commitment to the well-being of India that you have each brought in to this country over the years that really matters. But that spirit that you've brought in is one which in my view has already begun transforming India because you have been able to demonstrate that the kind of sensibility with which you have succeeded in the Western world or in other parts of the world, the drive, the enthusiasm, the energy can also be used in this country to change the country for the better. About 20 years ago, I very rashly gave an interview in which I rather notoriously said, why is it that the only country in the world where Indians don't succeed is India? Well, the truth is that's no longer true. Indians are succeeding in India. But by succeeding abroad, you have shown the way, you have shown the path, and the kind of success that you've been able to see in your lives. To take one example, the fact that in the United States, that the ethnic group with the highest median income is not white Americans, it's Indian Americans. That example, and many others like it, have demonstrated the very qualities that Indians are now demonstrating day after day in India. Sam Petroda gave you a very quick summary that I will not repeat of the main challenges facing this UPA government as it attempts to meet the expectations of Indians and I hope to live up to the standards that you yourselves have set. I will only recount one thing that I am, uh, as you all know, a new an NRI in a different sense, a newly returned India. I came back only in late 2008. I decided after having spent the vast majority, indeed more than two-thirds of my life abroad, that I needed to come back and see if I could make a difference in my own homeland. I've often said that whatever passports many of you carry, if you look in the mirror, you know who you are. And you are always ready to say, this fellow is a foreigner, he doesn't live here, he doesn't know our needs, doesn't speak our language, doesn't dress like us, and so on. I had to prove otherwise, and it was, it was an extraordinary challenge, and we can talk about some other time. But I did win, and I came, and I sat in the Central Hall of Parliament for the first time as a newly elected MP. And our wonderful and wise Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, made a very short and, as usual, insightful speech to the newly elected Congress Party MPs. 
And a little forgotten one thing he said, which I wanted to repeat to all of you. He said, don't forget and vision are driving this government's desire to bring about rapid and effective change. And in all of that, you are our partners. I was very pleased when one of our award winners this evening spoke about the great secular and pluralist heritage of India. Because that is something that my government is absolutely pledged to protect. But it is also something that each of you, and indeed the collectivity of you here today, reflects so well. I used to live in America for a very long time, and I, whenever I heard people talking about America as a melting pot, I would tell them truthfully, look, India is not a melting pot. What we are, I would say, is a thali. We're a collection of different dishes. Each item is in a different bowl, so it doesn't necessarily flow into the next. But each of those dishes belongs together on the same plate, and they combine on your palate to give you a satisfying meal. So that is the India that we are proud to represent. That is the India for which all of you stand, and which I hope you will continue to strengthen and support in the years ahead. As you know, our Prime Minister was able to announce his hope that before too long, and certainly before the next election, that NRIs with Indian passports, of course, would be given the vote in this country. As a Pravasi myself at the Bombay, Mumbai, Pravasi Bharati Divas in 2003, I made such a proposal and I felt very lonely because nobody there supported that at that time. The truth is, perhaps it took me to come back and exercise my vote here as an Indian resident for all of you to get that vote where you live. <laughs> but the truth is that the vote is really symbolic of something much larger. It's symbolic of a commitment to the future of this country. It is an affirmation that you have a stick in what India becomes. Someone like Sam Pichola didn't need a vote to come back to India and give his quality, his energy, his ideas, his contacts, his innovativeness to transform the telecom situation in this country. And today he's leading a knowledge mission that looks at more than just telecommunication, but various aspects of our country's future. It's people like him, NRIs, who have never relinquished India, who have ensured that India has been able to stride into the 21st century with confidence and with a sense of purpose. Our tomorrow will be better than the yesterday that many of you or your ancestors left. Keep coming back, not just once a year. Work with us, let us march together to a successful and prosperous and secure future for all Indians in the rest of the 21st century. Jane.